hand upon the lad, neither do you anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abram lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. A ram. He said a lamb a while ago. A lamb and a ram is two different things. What's the difference? Now they're both for sin offering. But a ram stood for consecration. That's how you know this points to Jesus Christ. Mm. There's only one sinless among the whole world. Uh, from the beginning to the end, Jesus is the only one that lived a sinless life. A consecrated life under God. Mm. He was the ram, mm. praise God, that was caught in the thicket. He was the consecrated one that mm. would give his life. A perfect life. A perfect sacrifice. A perfect ransom for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. That right there. Puts humility in your heart. Because we've all sinned and fallen short. We've all been wicked before God. And yet this perfect ram, this perfect consecrated one would give his life that we may have life. That we may come out of death and be brought to life. Amen. It, everlasting life. He is that everlasting provision. Oh, praise the Lord. Verse, let me keep on reading verse 13. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering. In the seed of his son, instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen, which is means the Lord will provide. Mm. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Do you need what do you need provision? What are you asking God for this morning? Mm. Jehovah Jireh, He is the provider. He's showing you the way that it's provided through. It's only coming through the cross. Many people say, well, I'm getting God this way, and I'm getting saved this way through Buddha, and I'm getting saved through this way, and I'm getting delivered this way, and I'm getting delivered that way. All these different programs of deliverance, all these different religions of salvation, let me tell you something, there's only one way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God but by me. He had to be sacrificed. Sin brought death into the world, and there had to be a death to pay for it. Oh, and Jesus gave himself that we may be saved. That we, we may have that everlasting provision. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Verse 15, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Praise God. There's that swearing by himself again, like it says in Hebrews. When he can swear by none greater, God swore by himself the covenant. He made a covenant with himself that day. Amen. Because he knew that we would break it and that every one of us would fall short even after salvation. There's no perfect one. I've talked to people that said, I have been sinless for two or three years. And I'm thinking, yeah, you're crazy. Ain't nobody been sinless for two or three years. You, we've all fallen short. He's the only one that walked that sinless path. It's Jesus Christ. You have to put your faith in Him. He's the only way to salvation. Amen. Your good works are not going to outweigh your bad. Because your very bad works is not receiving Jesus Christ as the only begotten son for your sins. Mm. That's why I was trying to tell that Muslim, your good works are not going to outweigh your bad son. Because mm. spiritually, you're in fornication. Spiritually, you're in adultery. That's the worst work. You can be an addict, cocaine addict, do a gambling addict, whatever you got to do. And, and, and the spiritual adultery is worse than the physical. You can have spirit, a physical adultery. They're both bad, but spiritually it's against God. When you're in another religion, when you're flirting with another religion, when you're talking about going into another spirit and chasing some other kind of weird stuff, going into Hinduism, going into uh, Buddhism or whatever, then you're committing spiritual adultery on God because He sent His only begotten Son that you should live. And yet you still desire to go that way. You see what I'm saying? It's even worse in the spiritual than it is in the physical. Because you're doing it to God. Both of them you sinned against God. But spiritually, you can't be saved that way. You've got to have faith in Christ. Verse 17, that in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Praise God, I want to give you that one. It says your seed. Through Romans chapter 4, through Galatians chapter 3, we are made Abraham's seed by faith in Christ Jesus. And it says you'll possess the gate of your enemy. You know what that means? That means Satan don't have power or dominion over you no more. Like it 
it says in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, He's given you all power over the enemy. Praise God. You tread upon the snakes and the scorpions. Amen. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Satan ain't got no power over you. He's got lies. He's got deception, but he's got no power. Like Paul said in the, in the Gospel in Romans chapter 6, I believe, sin does not have dominion over you anymore. Amen. You can come out. Amen. I can't come out. You can come out. You possess the gate of the enemy. Hallelujah. He can't come in unless you let him. That's you right. gotta open that gate and say, "Come on in, <laughs> Woo come on in." And, you know, you know what I'm talking about. If we let him in, if we open the gate, that's different. But he can't come in no other way. Amen. You've got the power of God, Amen. Amen. because you are Abraham's seed. Hmm. Oh, verse 18, and in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Hmm. Have we obeyed His voice this morning, no. church? Is there something He's asking you to do? I'm not going to keep you forever. Hmm. Is there something that he's asking you to do this morning? Right. Is he asking you to lay whatever gift he may have given you back on that sacrifice? Offer it back up to him. Offer it to him. Is he asking you to lay a family member or a child in his hands on that altar? Lay it on the altar. Quit worrying about it. Quit fretting about it. Hmm. Lay it on the altar hmm. and trust right. God. You see, he asked Abraham to lay Isaac on that altar and trust him. We can trust him for that provision of salvation. If you've got a family member that's gone awry, if you've got a family member or a situation that's gone astray, you can trust God. You can lay it upon the altar. You can lay it at the foot of the cross this morning. As the altar call comes forth, as the songs play and the music is going, do you have a situation you need to lay at the altar? Can you trust God, Jehovah Jireh? Our provider, the Lord will provide the land of Moriah. That's the land that you happen to be in, amen. In Christ, we are in that land of provision. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. If you just want to praise Him this morning, if you just want to thank Him this morning, the altar is open for that. If you need prayer this morning, the altar is open for that. Many times, I say it every time, that spiritual seatbelt is holding us in. I'm going to stay in the pew. I'm going to stay in the pew. When God is trying to bless you. He's trying to bless you. Amen. I know I kept, I've been there for 30 years. I've kept that spiritual seatbelt on. I wasn't coming out of the pew. Man, my wife barely got me out of the pew to get baptized. I'm not lying. I tell the truth on myself, man. Shame the devil. Tell the truth, shame the devil. All right. Oh, yeah. Out of fear, insecurity, and ignorance, and the Satan trying to just keep me in that. I'm telling you, you can be blessed when you come to the altar of grace and say, God, I'm here. I offer myself to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Praise God. It's time to give us, time to give him ourselves, people. Mm -hmm. Amen.